Hey, my name is Andrzej Langre. I'm current, currently working as intern in Red Hat. I'm 70 years old. My experience is programming took like five years. Now, like in September, I guess. I'm overclocking in ROG Chekhovsky guys and pretending some sport. And the best thing, I love unicorns. I'm 22. I am uh, also a web developer. Uh, I'm working in City Cache uh, for one half a year, but I'm a programmer for eight years. So let's start with uh, operating systems. So what even is operating system? Can you imagine using computer without operating system? I guess you can't. So it's uh, software which is loaded into computer after start PC until it's shut down. So it allows you to use PC and it's uh, doing the basic things like managing system resources which allows you to use keyboard, mouse and so on. Uh, the basic layer of operating system is kernel which mo do the most things with uh, hardware. Uh, here you can see the layers of operating system, which uh, is a uh, user program, so of course some I.O. management, drivers, memory management. The most important, uh, I think, is process management, which allows you to managing different programs on your you know, computer and communication with hardware. Which is, which is also important because you can't use it without this feature. Well, what is the kernel? Uh, it uh, has ABI, which uh, is you know, used for communication with application. It's not API. API is provided by libraries, but API is binary interface. It's not just the function, but uh, it defines the ways how the, uh, how the uh, arguments are provided to the kernel. It, it can contain some hardware drivers, in case of monolithic kernel. In uh, case of uh, microkernel, it doesn't, uh, microkernel doesn't have drivers. Uh, it has some routines. Uh, it should be efficient and secure. There are few types of kernel. I've uh, told you about uh, monolithic and uh, microkernel. I will describe them later. Uh, and it's managing resources, it managing processes, and so on. So the first type is monolithic kernel, uh, where it's specified that all services uh, for, from kernel are running in kernel space and uh, it's affected, effective and uh, no, it does not limit uh, access to hardware. Uh, when uh, some drivers may fail, the computer also shut down. You can, you know the BSOD blue screen of that. Uh, or kernel panic. It means usually that some of your drivers will fail. Uh, it can be hard to update this kernel because it contains a lot of things, a lot of drivers, a lot of um, source code to update. But it has got uh, easy design and uh, it has got easy implementation because you don't have to care about the barrier between those layers. And uh, microkernel, uh, this gives minimal function, functional uh, functions for running applications or drivers. Usually it does not contain any drivers and uh, you are using uh, just to call some system functions and uh, those kernel is calling another drivers 
but those drivers are, are called in usual space. Um, it defines just simple abstraction. Some more difficult functions are in libraries which can, which can be called by kernel. It, uh, uh, it's easier in a sense that it hasn't got a lot of source code, but it's the but uh, this is also the reason why we don't have here much functions. But when it's when there are scores and it's calling uh, in a, in a chain, it can uh, lead to some Cisco chains, which may uh, slow down your execution and the whole system. So what is syscall? Syscall is a way for calling services from user space. The reason is that we have to switch from user space to kernel, sp kernel space and back. It, usually it's done via software interrupt. Uh, there are 256 uh, vectors. We usually, there, there are most common interrupts for syscall. Uh, but nowadays we are calling uh, new, new, uh, soft, new assembler functions, sysenter and sysexit for, inter, for going back to user space. Uh, it's, we have to care how the arguments are passed because, as I said, uh, the kernel defines ABI, not API, which means that we can pass arguments by registering, by stack, or we can save them to memory on a previously specified location. And uh, Andre will tell you how to start with software develop with uh, kernel development. So, okay. Some basically points. You need to choose one language for it. We have chosen C++. It was written firstly in C, but objects are still cool. For example, Michal there is coding his own kernel in Rust. So it's up to you. And the platform for UR coding. So we have like two mainly platforms, which is 32 bits and 64. The, the problem of the specifying the platform is that if you want to make 64 bits oper operating system or even just kernel, you need to move or just step up to 64 bit by some layers or just some calls. Then the kernel type, monolith, microkernel, or, or even hybrid, which is some, something in between. The liter literature you are going to study. You need to get some building tools or even the chain. We used G++, and there is question if it's even worth it. It is a uh, really easy answer. It's not. <laughs> so how to start basically coding your own kernel? The main point is to boot it. So you have like at least two options of doing that, using group or just coding your own bootloader, which is running in real mode in 16-bit. Then you just you can start with just printing some characters to your screen. Then, of course, clearing the characters. Mess messing with some input and outputs. So, for example, input from keyboard or just output to your video memory. Then memory management, there we have some options like heap or just paging. Process or task management, which is mostly scheduling the processes and how it's executed. Drivers for, for example, mouse or keyboard and GUI. Where to get literature? We have these mainly sources, which is OS Dev Wiki or Stack Overflow threads, there are a lot of it. You can also have a look through mining source of code, which is really cool. 
or some OSDEF series, for example, the broken horns. So kernel, we specify there are two types of memory, once physically, which is basically just the RAM itself, and virtual memory, which is in protected mode. The protected mode is good in, for example, some task have its own memory, and you are starting from point zero, not, not like just one segment of memory itself and messing with that. Then some modularity, which, which is cool because of third-party drivers. You need to implement some ABI, then system calls, messing with me memory management, task management, and your own drivers in case you have monolith kernel. So task manager. Um, do somebody can describe what's task there? OK, maybe cannot. So the task is basically the program you are running. So for example, on, I can run some task on Fedora, which is mostly Firefox or just a terminal. Then we need to specify the difference between thread and process. The difference is process is like the task, but the process can have some threads. We, uh, we can see that, for example, on Google Chrome, which is running one mainly task for engine itself, WebKit, I guess, and then for each tab, its own thread. Mm, we can also say that process can have a lot of uh, threads, but not in opposite way. And multitasking, which is really fast switching between the tasks, so you can run a really bunch, huge bunch of these in the same time. OK, so our kernel named Pluto. What's Pluto? It's open source kernel, which was coded after op Open House in Red Hat in April to 2K18. It's coded in C++ and network wide Eslon Bear. It's monolith. The platform is 42 bits. We are using Grab to just get in not implement our own bootloader, which is not cool, because you need to, well, it, it's not cool uh, in the way like you need to mess with it, so it's boring as hell. And because we are using Grab, we can just multi-boot. This is um, some abstraction of the designs of Monolith and the Pluto. The difference between the monolith itself and Pluto is we, we basically implement GUI into kernel, but it's going to be more like services of the kernel and not just GUI as in other mo on monoliths. Um, kernel and the software um, bubble is the kernel space and user space, and the difference is in user space, you are running your own applications, and kernel just handle it. So our future plans for Pluto is self-hosting, which means you can run something. Its own file system, which will, which will be implemented maybe today or in some days. I hope in, to the end, to the DevCon, we have at least FAT16, maybe EXT4. Be more specific on GUI, because now it's just some moving windows, like itself, some blocks, not the content of, of it itself. Built-in compilation, so you can compile for it, for example, Firefox or etc. you want, and make some builds for ARM. If you want to join us, you can just write me to GitHub, Facebook, or meet someone from development team there, or open out. Maybe we will be on the first them too, but we are not speaking there. So we can maybe move to some samples. So this is basically this, oh, you see nothing, sorry. This is basically the sample of just um, man handling with keyboard. Um, it's from some previous commit on the GitHub, so 
I can say there is one issue, and it's buffer overflow. So if we type HV, it gives us a hello world, because it's hard coded, of course. But um, if we just type something more, we get something like this. Yeah. And this is basically how buffer overflow looks like. And definitely our GUI of the Pluto. So there is, it's on VGA, the resolution is uh, for 80 pixels to 30, I guess, or something like that. Oh, no, um, this is the other one. We are three, 320 pixels by 200 pixels. So, because there, there's issue with just interpreting it by VGA just itself. Because in this case of this resolution, we can support like 256 colors. And if we just shut it down and maybe turn off uh, the GUI. Source code. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the booting of Pluto without the GUI. Um, we have some dumps like the heap and what's allocated before we start some services like task management or even memory management, which is now just doing by paging. Then some PCI stuff, SATA stuff, and messing with IP addresses and ARP. So. After it's done, we have TCP manager, and after TCP manager is initialized, it just sent message on port 1234, like, hello, I'm Pluto, to TCP everywhere. So that's basically us. So any questions? I'd like to ask you whether it's just, whether it, this is just a toy for you, or whether you have some greater purpose. Uh, it's just toy for learning. Uh, I had to make some memory development of my homework, so I was interested what's beyond this, so I moved to code whole kernel, but it's a lot of work, and you can you can see there are, there are just pieces of almost everything, but not those pieces are not finished. We just wanted to try VGA palette and other things. So basically, I start with the kernel developing after the open house because there was workshop that there is written enterprise enterprise Linux which is not boot in and you need to fix it. So after like three hours, I managed to fix it. So I'm quite bad in it, maybe. What? Fixing by your own kernel. Uh, not at all. I, I just wanted to see more beyond, like how it really works just itself, not like the user. So I coded Pluto version point zero five maybe. So, any other questions? Uh, it's not in GitHub, it's in GitLab. Uh, but uh, I have to release new version of my source code. I, yesterday I made some updates to this, but, uh, but currently I'm not sure I want to show it because it's uh, <laughs> not in it's not in state. It should be because it should be uh, it should be microkernel, not monolithic like this one. Anyway, you can say that. 
uh, not right now. But in, uh, in the next few days, I should do it. <laughs> we will, but uh, I think we will we will change readme in uh, officially in uh, monolithic on GitHub because we may link it. So okay, no. Well, we are no messing with things. Was the dummy box like uh, uh, you have uh, some function that defined uh, in other file and so on, or just bug fixing it in la last time when you have no time for it and just man man manage to copy some files to make file and then realize you implemented some something, but it's in the other file, not in the you are compiling. So. Uh -huh. I remember I spent three days on VGA because uh, when uh, the TCP TCP message is sent, it got stuck. It got stuck because uh, it waits for answer. But I couldn't. I don't have. Didn't have set up uh, the. Didn't have set up network on uh, Quem, so it just wait. And there was a set up VGA, but not nothing was rendering, and the function wasn't called. Or just messing with the task management, we are, which we are doing now. So. The typical problem of monolithic kernel because we have to mess all the things. If we care about VGA, we can. We usually don't think that the problem is somewhere else, like in TCP. That's why I spent three days on. And we managed to comment line, which is starting the ARP communication, because it's it's not important to have, and it was the point we we were failing to even run it. So, somebody else, maybe. Uh, how did you debug that? Can you attach it to GDC? Uh, I've read some uh, some. Um, Articles about it, but I have not tried it. So we are just using, we are just printing right now. It's uh, it's not nice debug. I agree with that, but uh, it's the thing we are currently doing. Or you can just, I guess, connect GDB to our virtual box machine, or even the camel, and just buy some breakpoints debug it. So. Um, I haven't messed with that. So you are also printing yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will ask one more. Like, what is the state of the hardware documentation today? Because my experience is that uh, you read the documentation, you write some assembler, and it doesn't work, and you cannot find how, and then you find out that the hardware behaves uh, other way than it's documented, and it's pretty normal. So how is the state is today with you do all? We haven't made the drivers for any special device which would need something something uh, more difficult, something undocumented or better, better documented. Uh, almost VGA could be done via one simple intro, but uh, we decided to program for communication. Then, of course, you have stack overflow, so I think there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can make one last question. Because we are, we are quite running out of time. <laughs> so, you mentioned uh, that your other project is a micro kernel, and on a slide, you also sort of mentioned that. I don't remember the exact phrases, but uh, it was like you said that it was easier to do. So, do you know some desktop microkernel that is uh, already? I, I know Novak my, uh, micro hypervisor, and you can try operating system called Genimode, which is uh, which has got uh, GUI. I think they are able to run Firefox on their system. Uh, we were using some light version of Novak kernel in our school for making the task management. So. You, you, can, you can try this. So that's basically all of 
all from us. So see you later. Or if, if you have any more questions, just find us. We are mostly on Mozilla. So, okay.